solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. Uh, Raghu, you've been doing this work for the last several decades, four decades. Uh, when we look at the, the paradigm of leadership today versus maybe two or three decades back, I think you alluded to it in the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, sort of the, the military That's uh, right. kind of story to what we need today. When I looked at the Mahabharata Pandava archetypes, mm -hmm. I got a sense that uh, the, the relevance of the Nakula style of leadership as compared to the Bhima style of leadership is a little greater. Can you talk a little bit about how the leadership ask has evolved over time? Yeah. In the, in the state of yeah. business. See, um, I think all the five powers that we're talking about are critical. Mm -hmm. And if you look at organizations that have lasted for a long time, mm -hmm. yeah, either by design or by luck, the right type of leadership has come up and somebody has recognized it and celebrated it. Right? But what has happened is that the popular discourse and the popular idea of leadership till I think 20, 30 years back has rested largely in the colonizing kind of thing. Now you go, you capture market, you know, this capture and market share and all of that. Now, this Pepsi versus Coca-Cola model, right, has been very prevalent, right? Now, when you're constantly looking at this, Nah? and you're saying there is danger, there's danger, you tend to forget a lot of other things, right? Whereas when you take a Tata's, for example, when they say we also make steel, mm. they mean it. Yeah, I don't think many people know that the first people in the world to say, let's bring a social scientist to an organization to see how to build culture was the Tata's. That is Nakula leadership. Mm where you really understand the value of people and you invest in them for the long term, right? Now, very obviously, last 20, 30 years, innovation has become very, very critical. Mm. So you see a lot of places, na? like uh, Microsoft and things like that. The real leader is a Sahadeva. Mm. But he has a Bhima type person who is doing the marketing Phase, but the real power, the access to the power is in the Sahadeva type of leadership. Mm. Right? My feeling is that with the fast pace of change in the world and things like this, the Arjuna, Nakula, Sahadeva will gain prominence. Mm. Right? Contextual intelligence is going to become very critical. Mm. Right? Knowing how to really nurture key people and to create a core of institution building people is going to become very important. Innovation is going to become very important. It's not as though entrepreneurship or bringing order and predictability are not very important. But I think these will have to take the lead because if there's too much of building order, it becomes static. Mm. Right? Mm. If there's too much of this, you know, let's go and, you know, the startup kind of a thing, you don't build an organization. Right? The organization building comes when all five, in a sense, dance with each other. But I think long term, mm -hmm. you have to invest in key people. Right? The faster the reality changes, the less you're going to be able to collect knowledge and collect ways of working and real, that what they call site technology. Na? It will all be in the heads mm -hmm. of people. Na? It's only when you have the same thing happening over a long time that you can convert it into SOPs and this and that and knowledge can get spread. But if you're going to have to keep innovating, keep changing, it's people who are key. And in the book, along similar lines, you talk about the uh, ABCD of timeless leadership, huh. which, which I found, uh, uh, you know, that it sort of, it felt easy to absorb the way you sort of framed it. 
awareness balance contextual intelligence and dharma sankata understanding dharma sankata understanding dharma sankata can you sort of expand on this why why do you say these are timeless and you know you you single these out um see fundamentally uh, i was trying to decode what i thought were the key aspects of the mahabharata characters right now if you if you look at uh, let, uh, let me give you a story from a zen context na see there's a there's a discussion about uh, you know who is going to win and what is what does it mean to be in a fight yeah between a sensei and a student right so the sensei asks the student na what do you think is the most important thing for you to focus on he says the knife the guy says you're dead then he asks a question again what do you think is the most important thing to focus on so he says i have to look at the guy and the knife right and then he asks again what's the most important thing so it goes on like that till the teacher says you have to look at the guy you have to look at the knife you have to know that there's a crowd around watching it and you have to know that there are pebbles on the ground that can trip you up right if you don't have this width of awareness you can't win right and there's a book by miyamoto musashi na about the types of stances you take mm-hmm. yeah there he emphasizes the stance of silence and the stance of of space which is completely relaxed in yoga it's called sthira sukham you're completely at rest but you're completely aware that is balance right so when you're there you can be tipped off you can be pushed but you won't fall but if you're rigid one push and you'll fall right so an organization needs this balance na right a state of equilibrium a state of equilibrium peace but readiness na sthiram sukham mm. right and contextual intelligence is obvious yeah I mean if i don't know the trends right you'll be like layman brothers na you'll be preparing one of your friends must have been doing that the the ppt the famous ppt that was supposed to be presented next week right uh there were beautiful ppts being presented about the long term future of layman except that next week it didn't exist yeah so contextual intelligence is very very key to know what are the macro trends what's going to happen how things are going to move and now business becomes more and more complex now from exchange rates to war and this and that right so if you don't have contextual intelligence how do you navigate how do you make choices and like we discussed before for leadership it's always balancing of forces yeah it's not some victory somewhere na and you know in so many fields yaar you don't know who is your customer and who is your competitor and who is your collaborator huh? right in it yeah you can be buying something from ibm at one level and working with ibm to deliver something at another level in a third place you could actually be fighting ibm for for a job right in that context it's all balancing of forces and how do you keep this going right and balancing of forces to me is also dharma mm. right when when it's not just your stakeholders who you're talking about right talking about the earth you're talking about sustainability mm. so all that requires an understanding of this balance of forces 